5.3, solving systems of linear equations by elimination. Okay, so we've looked at substitution in the previous section, but now let's look at elimination. So this is sometimes called the addition method as well, um, because what we're going to do is take our uh, two equations in, in both of these examples, and we're going to treat them as a big um, uh, addition problem. And what we want to happen is we want the, uh, either the x's or the y's to be opposites. So this first uh, step here says, if necessary, multiply one or more of the equations so that at least one pair of like variable terms are opposites. So that means I want either my x's or my y's to be opposites. Now in this particular problem, the x's are already opposites, so I don't need to do that first step. I'm already set here. And the same thing here with the y's actually, okay? So I'm going to then add the equations together so that a variable is eliminated, okay? So I'm thinking of adding the uh, 3x to negative 3x. Well, they would cancel out, right? And then 2y plus 4y would be 6y, and 7 plus 5 is 12, okay? So I added those two equations together to get this, and the x is eliminated. So now I've got this new equation that only has one variable, and that means that I can solve it for y, and that's going to be my third step here, right? So I'm dividing both sides by 6, and now I've got y equals 2. Now once you get uh, one of the variables, either the x or the y, then you're going to solve the rest by substitution, the same way we did with substitution. So that means I'm going to go to one of the original equations, doesn't matter which one, but one of the ones that has an x and a y in it, and I'm going to plug this y value in so that I can find the x. Okay, so I'm going to use the top equation here. Um, and let's see, I'll write 3x plus 2y, now that I know that the y is 2, equals 7. And now I can solve this one for x, okay? So 3x plus 4 equals 7. Then I want to get x by itself, so I'll subtract 4 from both sides. 3x equals 3. Divide by 3, and x is going to equal 1. Okay, and then I've got my solution. I've got the x and the y. And you could write it as an ordered pair if you want to. You could also test out your answer. It should satisfy both equations if I plug in those that x and that y into the originals. Okay? All right, so next problem. Again, the y's are already opposite, so I don't need to do any multiplication. These first two problems are easier because it's set up so that you already have opposites. So those are opposites, okay? 9x plus 5x is 14x, and then 34 plus negative 6, well that's the same as 34 minus 6, that would give me 28, okay? So now I've got this new equation that only has an x in it, and I can solve that for x by dividing both sides by 14. That means x will equal 2, okay? So now that I got that, I go back to one of the original problems. Doesn't matter which one. I think I'll use the second one here just because they're smaller numbers. So uh, 5 times x, x was 2, plus 2y equals negative 6. Okay, and then let's see. Let's solve this for y. So 5 times 2 is 10. Next, I'll subtract 10 from both sides. So 2y equals negative 16, and then divide by 2, and y will equal negative 8. Okay, and there's my solution. Again, you could write it as an ordered pair if you like. The uh, next set of problems are going to be a little bit more difficult, because looking at this next system right here, um, if you were to add these together right now, neither the x's uh, or the y's would, would cancel, right? Oh, by the way, I didn't say this, but you want to make sure your two equations are lined up like this one is with the x's, the y's, then the equal signs, then the constants. So they're all lined up the same way. If they weren't lined up like that, you might have to shift some things around first. Okay? All right. So what I'm going to do then is I'm going to decide, do I want to try to eliminate the x's or the y's? And it doesn't really matter, but what I usually do is just I look to see well what will take the least amount of uh, multiplication and it's, a, it's the same amount really for the x's or the y's this time 
I'm going to concentrate on the Ys because one of them's negative and one of them's positive already at least. So they got that going for them. And then I'm thinking, well, what would I have to do to get these to be opposites? Well, what I can do is take this whole second equation and multiply everything by, um, by 3 because then this would turn into a 3y. Okay, So I'm going to make a little note here. And I recommend doing that because um, it gets hard to, to trace your work back if you don't keep track of what you're doing in each step. So I'm leaving the top equation alone. I'm just going to rewrite it right here as it is. But the second equation, I'm going to triple the whole equation. So I'm going to multiply all three terms by 3, because then that equation will be equivalent if, as long as I multiply everything by 3. So 3 times 3x is 9x. 3 times y is 3y. And i got my equal sign. And 3 times 12 is going to be 36. Okay. Now when I add these together, the y's will cancel. All right. That's what I want to happen. 1x plus 9x is 10x. And then let's see, uh, 24 plus 34, that would be uh, 60. All right, and now um, I can solve for x. I'm going to divide both sides by 10. And x equals 6. All right, once I get my x, don't forget back to go back and find the y. I'll go back to the, uh, I'll use, I'll use the second equation here. So let's see. 3x, well, x was 6, plus y equals 12. All right, let's see. 3 times 6 is 18. And then I'll subtract 18 from both sides to get my final answer here for y. So y is negative 6 then. Okay. All right, let's try another. So um, next problem, I'm looking at the x's and the y's. This one doesn't really matter. Take the same amount of work either way to get these to be opposites. So um, I like to just circle the ones so I don't forget which I was trying to eliminate. So I'm going to leave the bottom equation alone, but I'm going to multiply the top equation by negative 4 so that I have negative 4x and positive 4x. So just making myself a little note of what I'm doing. Okay, so let's uh, multiply everything by negative 4 in the top equation. Negative 4 times x is negative 4x. Negative 4 times 4y would be negative 16y. And negative 4 times 22 would be negative 88. Okay, bottom equation I'm just leaving alone. So I'm just rewriting it just so that I have it all set up for the addition part. Okay, now the um, x's are opposites, so those will cancel. Negative 16y plus 1y would be negative 15y. Okay. And then uh, let's see. Um, negative 88 plus 13 is going to come out to negative 75. Okay. And then I'm going to divide by negative 15. And y will come out to 5. Okay, now that I got that y, I'm going to go back to one of the original equations. I think maybe I'll use the top one here just because the x is or, or just 1x. Then I don't have to do any division. Okay, but it doesn't really matter. All right, so I've got x plus 4 times my y. My y was 5 equals 22. And then I just subtract 20 from both sides. And x is going to equal 2. And there's my solution. Okay. All right, let's try some more. Next up, I'm looking at these. Okay, so these are going to get even harder because I have to do, I have to multiply both equations by something. I can't just take the top equation and multiply it. 2x by something and have it come out to negative 3x because 2 doesn't go into 3 evenly. I, I could use a fraction, I suppose, but that or decimal, but that would get really complicated. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to pick, it doesn't really matter the x's or the y's here, it's going to be the same amount of work. So I'm going to eliminate the x's here. And I'm thinking, okay, if I wanted those to be opposites, I'm thinking, well, what, what did 2 and 3 both go into? And they both go into 6, right? So what I'm going to do is get the top um, I'm going to have this be 6x, so that means I'd want to multiply by 3 on the top equation, so that says 6x. And if that's a 6x, that means I want this to be negative 6x. So I'm going to take the bottom equation and multiply by negative 2, right? Because that will give me a 6x up here, 
and a negative 6x down here. That's what I want, okay? And now since I tripled the t the, that x term, I gotta triple that whole equation. So I gotta think three times negative three y is negative nine y, and then three times five is 15. Okay, bottom equation, multiply everything by negative two. I already did that with the x. So negative two times negative two y would be positive four y. And negative two times 10 is negative 20. It really helps to keep those notes to remind yourself what you're doing. It's really easy to lose your place and actually accidentally multiply by the wrong thing or just copy one of the numbers wrong or something like that. And that'll throw everything off, okay? All right, but now I am ready to do the addition. So those will eliminate. Let's see, negative 9y plus 4y would be negative 5y. And then 15 minus 20 is negative 5. All right, and then when I divide both sides by negative 5, y is going to come out to 1. Once you get one of the variables, go back to one of the original equations. I'll just use the top equation here. So 2x minus 3 times y equals 5, and my y was 1. Okay, so I can say 2x minus 3 equals 5. Let's add 3. And then divide by 2. And x will equal 4. Okay, all right, one more to go. So looking at these again, we're going to have to multiply both equations just like we did on the last problem. This one, I'm going to choose to eliminate the y's just because one's positive and one's negative um, already. Um, so I'm thinking, well, hey, again, both 3 and 2 go into 6. So let's have the top, uh, let's have this be a negative 6y up here. So I need to double the top equation. And then if I wanted a positive 6y down here, I'd triple the bottom equation. Okay, so let's see what happens. I'll double everything on top. I got negative 4x minus 6y equals negative 12 then. Okay. Bottom equation, I'm tripling everything here. 3 times negative 3x is negative 9x. 3 times 2y would be positive 6y. And 3 times negative 9 is negative 27. Okay, and now I can see the y's are opposites. That what, that's what I was going for. That's good news. Okay, so negative 13x is going to equal negative 39. Negative 12 plus negative 27 is negative 39. Okay, then I'll divide by negative 13. And x is going to equal positive 3. Okay. All right, so... Um, last step, I'm going to plug this into one of the original equations. I'll use, uh, I'll use the bottom equation here this time, but it doesn't really matter. So I'm going to replace that x with 3, right? And then I'm going to solve this for y. So let's see, this is negative 9 plus 2y equals negative 9. So I'll add 9 to both sides. Then 2y equals 0. And then I'll divide by 2. And it's okay to have 0 divided by something. It's okay to have 0 on the top of a fraction. You, can't, you just can't divide by 0. I can't have 0 on the bottom. 0 divided by anything equals 0. So that is my y coordinate. Okay? So um, you can definitely get answers that are fractions or decimals. But um, when in an Algebra 1 class, when you're just starting these uh, problems, probably most of the problems you'll get, you'll have integer answers like all of these. So um, I would recommend if you happen to get a decimal or a fraction for an answer to double check your work. Um, because if you made a little mistake somewhere, probably your answer will come out to a fraction or decimal. Um, so um, just something to look out for. Not saying that it can't be those types of answers. All right, that is all I have for this section, and I'll see you next time.